Hello everyone. In this project I will be using this array of sensors in a breadboard attached to a Arduino Nano and this radio transmitter which uses the generic 433 MHz chip and I will be receiving this data in this receiver here attached to an Arduino Uno with an LCD screen from a Nokia 5110 to display all the results. If you watch my previous videos, you may recognize this structure here made of cardboard that is supporting these antennas to improve the range of these radio modules. Here we see a monopole antenna in the transmitter and a dipole in the receiver consisting in a monopole attached to the antenna side and another monopole attached to the ground. We can see what the... First of all, I will connect the Mm, the transmitter. This will create some interference, so don't be scared. The microphone is picking some of this radio noise, so you may be hearing some buzzing noise every 1.5 seconds now. And now I will show you the effect when the light is off. I will change the sensitivity of the camera. Okay, I cannot while recording, but it doesn't matter. You see that the LCD screen has some backlight, so it allows us to read during the night. Okay, so let's go to see this in individually. This is the transmitter module, and I will switch it off to avoid interference in the microphone. So I disconnect here the USB. From I will start from right to left. So this is maybe the most interesting sensor in this array. This is a radar sensor. It uses a microwave of, uh, I think it's 3.2 megahertz, and it detects movement. So it detects movement around 7 meters. So anything it's moving around, it will trigger this, and it will go high, the data pin. And this is quite similar to the sensor that detects infrared. So it detects humans or animals that Im emit infrared because they are hot. But this can... Mm, detect anything it's moving so it doesn't need to be a, a human being or an animal or doesn't even need to be hot and even this goes through walls so you could have this inside the door and it will mm, trigger when someone is walking outside the door so this is quite interesting thing second we have a teal sensor so this is the echo version of the of the mercurium mercurium sensor in which when you tilt the liquid metal goes away from a switch and it closes or opens the circuit. This works with a two little ball, so I will just swing it out. If you can hear click, 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 these are the two balls inside here. When it is in the vertical position, the two balls are closing the circuit here, and when it tilts, it opens. So we can know if this is in a flat position of this tilt more than 10 or 15 degrees. We could change the angle of sensitivity just bending the cylinder up and down. Then we have the sound sensor here. And this just detects peaks. So this is, I think this can be used to turn on and off light, like clapping. But you need to be reading continuously the digital output of this. This also has an analog output. This could be used to record sound if you have a proper mm, digital processing. But I'm not using this like so. I'm just reading the digital output, which is this pin here. Maybe I will zoom a bit. Here you see the analog, A0 and D0. So here I'm just reading the digital and this to detect peaks like a clapping or something like that. Then we have the vibration sensor, similar to the sound, but I guess it works for uh, lower frequencies. And this is quite useful if you have this array um, in a table or something and people put things in that table, you will get the vibration. So you will know when some people are using a table or some kind of furniture. Light sensor here, we have a photoresistive cell here, and this IC circuit just amplifies the signal and tells us if it's high or low. This acts contrary as all the other sensors. All the other sensors, when they detect what they are looking for, like tilt, sound, presence of movement, they go high. This will go high when there is low light. So when there is a lot of light, it goes low. So we just need to take this into account when we program the, our Arduino. This is a digital DH, let me check my notes, DH11. 
so it gives temperature and humidity. It's a digital, so we don't need to read um, mm, like an on-off output. It gives a data output, so we have to read the the files or the variables that it outputs. I find it not very precise, particularly the humidity. It's always like 10 or 20 percent below what I get from other sensors, and also the humidity is like one or two degrees below what I expect. So I think the precision of this is not very accurate. So to overcome this uncertainty or low precision of this, I also installed this um, one here. I think this is, let me check my notes. I don't remember now the name. I will add later because otherwise I need to pull it out. BPM. It's something like BPM or something like that. This reads mm, pressure, atmospheric pressure and temperature. There is another version of this that also reads uh, humidity. This doesn't. And this uses a communication of I2C. These are quite different of all the others. For all the others, I will be using the digital inputs of the Arduino here. And this goes connected to the pins, I think it's A, A4 and A5 here and here and go to these two pins, which are the SCL and SDA, the SDA. There is one thing to take into account in this sensor. All the others work at 5 volts, except the radar, which works at 3.3, but has a voltage regulator. So we can mm, feed this sensor either in a range from 4 volts to, I think, up to 20 something. So it's quite tolerant with the input voltage and then it outputs at 3.3 volts. This needs to be powered at 3.3 volts, otherwise you risk to damage it. As well, the I2C, I2C bus needs to be at 3.3 volts. Arduino works at 5, so we can connect it directly. Uh, if you see here a mess of resistors and cables, this is a voltage divider that I made to to have the correct voltage at, the, at this I2C interface. Now I will see what are the variables that I'm using. This outputs two floats. So in Arduino, a float is at four bytes. So two floats will be of um, eight bytes in total. This uses two integers. Even if it outputs numbers with a decimal point, I don't know why it's programmed program like that, the library, because the decimal point is always at point zero. So I converted this into integer to save some data in the transmission. So these are two integers. One integer is um, it's a two bytes, so in total this makes four bytes. Then all these are bits, because it's either high or low, but you cannot transmit bits in a digital transmission. The minimum amount of information you can transmit is a byte, so I'm using a byte for each of them. You could do this more intelligently if you make a word. So you group bits to make a byte and send a byte to represent all the sensors, but it's just so tiny the amount of information that I just made a byte for each of them. So the byte is either one zero 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 or all zeros to represent high or low. So it's one byte for this, one byte for this, one for this, one for this, one for this. It's five bytes. In total, we have a struct of 17 bytes. Then this process in the Arduino, um, I will not make screen, cap screen capture in this video, but I will provide the links to the code. And then this is sent using this 433 MHz module, using this monopole antenna, and it's received by the receiver. We see here we also have some analog readings. I like to send some more information, like the voltages in the board. We have the analog one, it's going, well, now I cannot tell here in the video, but I'm reading the 5 volts, the 3.3 volts, and the 0 volts from the board with the analog input. And I also have this cable here, which is reading the voltage of my power bank. So I know how much time of battery I have left from my base because I know the voltage of this power bank. This power bank, the voltage is fluctuating very sharply. I think it's because of the electronics of 
here and to avoid this I'm using a pool here which consists in a 1k ohm resistor and a 10 what is this nanofarad yeah I, I think this is 10 nanofarad or 100 nanofarad capacitor so this acts as a pool. Imagine you want to measure the level of the sea and there are waves. So you, if you take measurings, waves can go up and down one meter. So what you will do is to make a pool with a very small opening. So the waves cannot get inside, but the average value of the sea level is inside. So imagine this resistor is the opening to the sea. This is the sea with waves and the voltage of this capacitor is the inside of the pool. And I'm reading this in the A1. Okay, so I put all this data together in the extract I told you before and I send with this transmitter and just to show you how it works I will plug it but this will make some interference in, into the microphone. You see when the red light is on it means the transmitter is transmitting data. When it's not it means it's reading the, all the sensors. This is the receiver here, attached to an Arduino Uno. And this is the structure I already mentioned before with a dipole configuration antenna. And this is directly connected to the Arduino Uno without cables. So I just reconfigured some pins. So two of the pins are the ground on the 5 volts that this board needs. And the other is the data. I did the same for this screen. So I wanted this to be the most compact possible project, so I'm not using breadboards or cables or anything. I plug all the pins of this Nokia 5110 directly to the Arduino Uno. This goes from left to right, it's the reset, etc. So the reset is goes to the pin number 2 and they go until pin number 8. So if you notice, there is a jump between number, number 7 and number 8 in an Arduino Uno board. It means one of the pins is rotating in the air. That's why I have this jumper here. This jumper is for the backlight. So if I pull out this jumper, the backlight will be deactivated. Mm, of course, you will need to change the pin out of the library to, for this to work. If you notice, this blinking here is because after each receiving of a message from the Mm, sensor array, I have a serial write. You also see that I cut a corner here in this LCD to allow to plug this receiver radio module directly to the board. You don't need to do this if you want to use cables. You will be able, I think, to, me to, to use this board, this module connecting the five grounds here and the ground here, and then you still have two or three digital pins that can be used outside this LCD screen. And this is the output of the LCD screen. I will go part by part. The first temperature is the one from the DH, DH11 sensor. The H is the mm, humidity from the same sensor, 42%. I will explain this later. Then we got to the BHP, BHP280 sensor, which is the one using the I2C in interface. It's reading this uses float, so we have decimal points after the temperature. It is reading 26.47 degrees now, and the pressure in pascals 101,031 pascals. So usually we read pressure, atmospheric pressure in hectopascals. We have to move two points, the comma is 1,010 hectopascals. Then we have all the mm, byte or on off sensors, which are light, vibration, sound, tilt radar and finally here we have the time in milliseconds that is measured between two res mm, successful receptions of messages so we see that this is around 1.6 seconds the the sensors when they are off they will be like this like like vibration sound ta tilt and now we see radar going being triggered so when it's uh, with dark background it's triggered. And then we have the analog readings from the different voltage of the board. We have the 5 volts, it's reading 5 volts. The 3.3 .3 it's reading 4.05. 
the ground is reading 0.07 and the battery is reading 4.22 volts. It's uh, fully charged now. This is a lithium, li lithium ion, so it's fully charged at 4.2 and it's discharged at 3.7 and 3.8 more or less. So now I will try to trigger different sensors, mm, not the light because I don't have a flashlight here. I will make it vibrate. We see a vibration going off now, here. I will tilt. So we see a tilt going off here. And you see most of the time the, rad the radar is triggered because I'm in the same room as the sensor now, just to make this video. So at any movement I do, the radar is being triggered. I will just keep still for a second to see if it goes low. Yeah, it went out. And this tilt sensor is not very accurate. Sometimes it keeps being in the tilt position, if it, even if it's not, because these little metallic balls make not doesn't make a very good contact, I think. So that's everything I wanted to tell you. I just will show you how it looks without the backlight. So I will remove the jumper and turn on the light. And this is how the screen looks with the normal light, without the backlight. So I made this to be highly modifiable. So when you have the code, you can just change this output uh, as you want. You can add or remove sensors. And uh, you can also change the, like the welcome screen that I added some animation. And I will also add the, the reference to the people because I copy code from bits from internet for all the different sensors and radio transmission. So I will add the names of people who made the original code. Uh, and I forgot to tell you, this thing here in the top, in which you see X, 1, 2, 5, 10, it's telling you how many transmissions can, have been missed. So now it's receiving every, every 1.6 seconds. It means all the transmissions are successful. When the X is with a white background, it means it just displayed the va valu values in the LCD screen. When it goes with black background, it means, okay, it's waiting for the new new transmission, and this takes around 1.6 seconds. If it misses one, so in around 1.7 seconds, it didn't receive again the transmission, the one will be black lighted, and so on. So now I will disconnect the base to see how this works. Now the base is disconnected, so you see immediately the one going with dark background. All the values just kept as they were at the last reading, and you see that some readings are wrong because probably they it still sent a message, but the reading was not good because I disconnected the power. And you see now 10 failed transmissions. So when you see this here, you know that you need to go to check what's going on in the base because some something didn't go well. Okay, I hope this was clear. And if you have some question, you just ask me. I will try to solve all the questions. I will add the code in the description. And you can do this with any sensors you have. You see that I'm using floats, I'm using integers, I'm using bytes. So I think this covers all the possibilities all the possible outputs of sensors. I, I'm also using analog inputs and I'm using different um, transmission interfaces. I'm using I2C and then I'm using a struct to send this via radio signal. Maybe if there is interest on this video, in the, in the next video I will make a case for this just to keep this in a fancy manner inside home and another case for the sensor array to leave it outside the home. Thank you for watching. Bye.